After five long, lootless years, Borderlands 3 has finally revealed its big, beautiful face with a lengthy reveal trailer that shows off a ton. There are new worlds, new vault hunters, new enemies, and yes, new guns. We're going to point out all the new and returning aspects that we can find. First, let's start with the new big bads of the series. Presumably, these are the leaders of a cult known as the Children of the Vault. Children of the Vault, not to be confused with the Marvel Comics group of the same name, are an enemy faction new to Borderlands. Sort of. By sort of, I mean they seem to be made up of psychos and other enemies we've encountered in the series before. Also, while this cult will make their official series debut in Borderlands 3, this isn't the first time we've seen them. They actually appeared in the Borderlands Origins comics way back in 2012, and were also referenced in some DLC for Battleborn, Gearbox's 2016 hero shooter, along with the tease of going to Promethea, and something about the scientist Tannis perhaps not being who she says she is. Okay, back to these two. At a glance, it's probably safe to say that she's one of the last few sirens based on the markings on her arm. Now, sirens are generally female, but if you take another look at this guy, the lead singer of your weird cousin's goth metal band, he looks like he has some red glowing siren runes on his face, which would indicate that he's somehow managed to acquire siren abilities. Oh, and he has a giant mech arm. Sweet. It also appears his name could be Troy, based on the propaganda poster outside the camp. What's a Borderlands game without some of the original Vault Hunters? Here we can see Lilith, the playable siren in the original Borderlands and your ally in Borderlands 2, making a return. Later in the trailer, we see her apparently struggling with the cult leaders as she crawls towards what looks like a vault key. Another big detail here is that Lilith's siren runes are missing from her arm and chest. It seems as though she may have been stripped of her powers. Is it possible these two cult leaders have the ability to siphon the powers of sirens to use for their own? Fast forward a little more and we have Mordecai, Brick, and an all grown up tiny Tina, who's clearly still a kid at heart as she carries around this plush. We don't know exactly how much time has passed, but she seems to be at least out of her teens, so it's safe to assume it's been almost a decade or so since the events of Borderlands 2. But more importantly, what's a Borderlands game without new Vault Hunters? As with each Borderlands game, there are four new Hunters to choose from. It's no different here. Starting from the left, we have our newest Siren, Amara. Packing skills such as phase locking, shifting, and a whole lot of hands that looks to end in a giant electric explosion. Next to her, we have what appears to be a more stealth-based class. As you can see here, he can summon a duplicate version of himself likely meant to distract enemies, just like Zero was able to do in Borderlands 2. Next, this hunter looks as though he has the ability to summon beasts to fight alongside him. Notice the eye on the skag here, it's very similar to the mask this hunter wears. Also of note is the color coordination between the skag, spider ant, and the new beast that looks kinda like a bully mong but with fewer arms. Perhaps it's a sort of necromancer class akin to Diablo and slain enemies can be brought back to fight. Finally, we come to the character that was teased back at GDC in 2017, who has the ability to summon a mech that digitizes into the world and is fully controlled by the player. Rewind a little and we can see here that another player is able to jump on its back and seize control of its minigun. Let's take a look at the setting, or perhaps more accurately, settings. This time around, it appears we'll be leaving Pandora, but not permanently since we can see a lot of the arid badlands throughout the trailer. That said, looking at some of the quick flashes of never-before-seen locations, it's clear some of these are different worlds, most notably this sprawling metropolis. It's like something taken straight out of Blade Runner, but with the saturation turned way up. Our guess is that this is Promethea. While references in past games state that Promethea's living conditions aren't anything to write home about, it could be central to the many corporations in the Borderlands universe. Let's just hope this city is fully explorable. We also get a look at this swampy area that looks like it was ripped out of Hunter's Grotto from the Borderlands 2 DLC Sir Hammerlock's Big Game Hunt. Speaking of Hammerlock, he's back! Seen alongside someone who appears to be Aurelia. Aurelia is a playable character that debuted in DLC for the pre-sequel. We aren't exactly sure who this is next to her, perhaps an aged Vaughn from Tales from the Borderlands? Speaking of, if we take it back some more, we can see Tales from the Borderlands' is Reese, the former Hyperion employee who's now the owner and CEO of Atlas. To his right is Zero, the playable assassin in Borderlands 2. 
and to his left is what appears to be a Crimson Lance soldier. Which makes sense since the Crimson Lance is a privatized military force run by Atlas. Among some other returning characters we see is the arms dealer Marcus Kincaid, Patricia Tannis, and of course everyone's favorite CL4P TP unit, Claptrap. Finally, we come to the various enemy combatants in the new trailer. There are plenty of returning bad guys, of course, like Psychos, Goliaths, Varkids, and of course, that Crimson Lance soldier we mentioned earlier. We also see a few new enemy types, too. There's that primate fellow we already covered, but the real star of the show is this huge dino-esque beast. Considering its skull is huge and tough looking, it's likely that its only crit spot will be when it opens its mouth to spew flames at you, similar to that of a skag, but, you know, with fire. Perhaps the most important new enemies shown are these robots. Right off the bat, it's apparent they are likely aligned and operated by the Malawan Corporation thanks to their orange, white, blue, and hexagonal patterns, which are identical to Malawan branded guns. The little floating servitor-style orbs hovering next to it appear to be a helper of sorts, though whether or not that means it heals them during combat or will just shoot at you as a distraction is unclear. So there are all the most important details we noticed in the Borderlands 3 reveal. Did you see anything we left out? Let us know in the comments below, and for more on Borderlands 3 now that it's finally real, stay right here with IGN.